Coming up on Valley News Live at 10, a chilling threat regarding a plane into the U.S. Capitol tomorrow. Answering your questions about the stimulus checks. Plus, a Minnesota dining reopening thanks to its customers. Valley News Live at 10 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 10. CBS News has learned the FBI and FAA are looking into a breach of the air traffic control system tonight after someone broadcast a threat to attack the U.S. Capitol over the radio frequencies used by pilots. CBS News' Jeff Pegas has exclusive new reporting tonight. The chilling threat obtained exclusively by CBS News was heard by multiple air traffic controllers on Monday afternoon in New York. Sources tell CBS News the Pentagon and other agencies were briefed today about the digitized voice recording and believe it was designed to suggest hitting the Capitol on the same day Congress is set to count the Electoral College results. The recording refers to Qasem Soleimani, the Iranian general killed in a U.S. drone strike ordered by President Trump and came on the one-year anniversary of his death. You look over his past. His past, he's been called a monster. And he was a monster. And he's no longer a monster. He's dead. But in Iran, Soleimani is revered. And Iranian officials have vowed revenge. CBS News has learned that while the government does not believe the warning of an attack is credible, it is being investigated as a breach of aviation frequencies and the threat would be a crime. Experts say the intrusion is concerning because it could affect the instructions pilots get about how and where to fly planes. Sources tell CBS News a message was sent to air traffic controllers reminding them to report anything unusual like a plane deviating from its flight path or any type of threat. The FAA says it's working with law enforcement, the FBI not commenting. The IRS is sending out $600 stimulus checks into the bank accounts of millions of Americans, a process the agency says should be much quicker than what happened last spring. However, we are hearing from many of you with questions and concerns. So tonight, Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley sat down with a local expert and has your answers. Season storm saying two stimulus checks in separate years isn't making her job any easier and says the questions have already been pouring in on her end too. Where is it? How do I find it? Where do I go to update my checking account information? And I always direct them to the IRS website. Meanwhile, the number one question we received today asks if either of the checks are taxable. Long story short, no. However, unemployment benefits are. If you got that extra 600 bucks a week, plus other unemployment that you qualified for, and you didn't have any federal income tax taken out or state tax, you're going to end up owing taxes. And Herman says people who collected unemployment need to plan now for how that will impact their taxes this spring. The next stop question is for the many college students and young adults who say they haven't seen a penny from either check. If this college student worked and is making, you know, 20 grand or something, sometimes that college student can be considered independent. But sometimes, too, it's still a benefit to claim that child on the parents' tax return. I mean, the parents have a right to claim your ch the children up to the age of 24 long as you're in school. Herman says if your child isn't claimed on your taxes and you can prove on this year's taxes that they didn't get either stimulus check, then yes, you'll get that money. Baby Hurley, Gavin News Live. Herman added that if you've changed your bank account since the first stimulus check, you have to update on the IRS website, saying the problem might take a while to be resolved and says getting your money won't be guaranteed. After seeing multiple snowmobilers riding through a North Fargo street in front of houses and on the sidewalk, Fargo City Commissioner Tony Gehrig saw our story and decided to meet with the city attorney and ask why this type of activity is against the law and could cost violators $100. You know, if it makes sense, that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, not uh, pursue it any further. Uh, but if it doesn't make sense, let's, let's think about ways that we could, um, you know, allow it. Fargo police say if it was allowed in the city, they worry about people being irresponsible and reckless on snowmobiles. They call it a risk, but don't have any data showing how dangerous it could be. To stay up to date with the latest on this story, you can download our free VNL News app. 
To kick off the 67th legislative session, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum addressed all lawmakers today to lay out his priorities for the next 80 days. Among the major themes, the governor put emphasis on investing in infrastructure, honoring those who have had to adapt to the new normal, as well as opportunities for state industry. As we look forward together to the 2021 and 2023 biennium, it's clear that our state is well positioned to rebound and recover thanks to the courage, the grit, the ingenuity, and yes, the resiliency of North Dakotans. In response, North Dakota Democrats say there's more that should have been done regarding the pandemic, citing the state's unemployment rate, cost of living, and food insecurity, among other things. Tonight, restaurant owners in Minnesota are waiting uh, with bated breath Tomorrow at 2 p.m., Minnesota Governor Tim Walz is announcing changes to COVID restrictions. The governor put a pause on indoor dining across the state on November 20th. As part of a four-week plan, he extended it on December 16th. The new year is looking bright for a Minnesota diner after a very dark period. The establishment nearly closed until patrons stepped in to save it. Boyd Hooper reports. All right, we apologize. We hope to get you that story in a little bit. Morehead Public Services water distribution system is safe. It continues to be monitored and tested on a regular basis as facilities are reopening after an extended shutdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Business owners should conduct plumbing evacuation, evaluations rather for water quality ahead of the reopening. If your business or building experienced a prolonged shutdown or lack of normal water use, MPS stresses the importance of following the updated provisions within MPS's recommended flushing plan for businesses. They want to remind while it is tested and monitored, water within a building's premise is the responsibility of building owners. Police need your help finding a 14 and 15 year old pair they believe may be heading to the East Coast. 15 year old Ethan Duval was last seen yesterday afternoon around 2.30 in Kindred. He's possibly traveling with 14 year old Diamond Funk. She is reported as a runaway in Frazee, Minnesota. The last known vehicle Ethan was driving is a white 2003 Chevy Impala with North Dakota license plates 104 BNH. If you see them, call the Cass County Sheriff's Office. Still ahead tonight on Valley News Live at 10. 10. Too close to call. The latest from Georgia as some polling places are open late tonight. But first, our string of above average temperatures continues. How's your forecast next?